As a decentralized exchange, DYDX is part of the DeFi revolution, bringing sovereignty and privacy to your financial assets. When most people begin their journey into the world of blockchain and Web3, their first step is to sign up for a custodial wallet on a centralized exchange as the primary place to transact and store their digital assets. While these custodial wallets can make the transition from fiat currency seem less intimidating, they're a half step towards true sovereignty over your funds and provide only a glimmer of the opportunities that decentralized finance has to offer. As the name implies, custodial wallets manage private keys on a user's behalf to store your digital assets. Custodial wallets may be at first more user-friendly, but this initial comfort comes with several costs. First, there's the literal cost of higher fees charged on centralized exchanges. Second, most custodial exchanges only provide access to a fraction of available digital assets. Lastly, but most importantly, custodial wallets do not provide you with true sovereignty over your funds. Your custodial wallet is still more or less acting as a bank, a third party that controls your assets. True sovereignty and everything decentralized finance has to offer begins once a user transfers their funds to a non-custodial or self-custody wallet. There are many non-custodial wallets available, both as hardware devices for cold storage and browser or app-based software wallets for easy network interaction. In this video, we'll use MetaMask as it's currently the most popular browser-based non-custodial wallet. To install MetaMask, go to metamask.io and click download. That'll direct you to the location to download the extension for your particular browser. In this case, I'm using Google Chrome, but the process is the same for other supported browsers. The creation of a non-custodial wallet begins with the generation of a unique seed phrase that will be used to derive your private keys. You can think of a seed phrase like a master recovery password that will allow you to recover your wallet even if you lose access. This is fundamentally different from a custodial wallet where a third-party custodian controls the access to your private key. Now select the option to create a new wallet and enter a password that you'll be using to access MetaMask. Non-custodial wallets provide you with full control of your digital assets. This is done by storing the private key needed to access your wallet and controlling access to the key via a password or other security mechanism. Make sure to use a unique and secure password. Anyone who can access your MetaMask extension can access your funds, unless you take the additional step of securing your keys with a hardware wallet. Now click to reveal your seed phrase and print it out or carefully write it down. You need to keep your seed phrase secure since anyone who has access to your seed phrase can generate your private key and thus access your wallet and funds. Avoid taking a screenshot or storing the phrase digitally on any system that could be hacked. Many people keep their seed phrases in a physical safe or a lockbox. If you lose it, nobody can help you recover it. If it falls into someone else's hands, nobody can prevent that person from gaining access to your funds. With true sovereignty comes true responsibility. MetaMask will now ask you to confirm your seed phrase. Since I've exposed the seed phrase to you, I'll never use this demonstration account because anybody with this phrase can recover the account and access any funds. Because non-custodial wallets don't rely on third parties, users have to rely on themselves to keep their funds safe and secure. Just like if you took all of your savings out of your bank, it would be up to you to keep it safe. MetaMask is now set up as your non-custodial wallet. You may want to grant access to the extension in your browser so that you can have easy access to the icon in your toolbar. You can rename your wallet by clicking Account Details. Be extremely careful if you ever click the button to export your private key. If you do this when somebody else can see your screen, they could steal your wallet. Directly below the name of your wallet is an abbreviated version of your public address. You can click the button to copy your full public address into your clipboard. A public address is a unique cryptographic code that allows users to receive payments. While you never want to share your private key, you can share your public address with anyone who wants to make a transfer to you. Now that I have my public address copied into the clipboard, I'm going to go to my Coinbase account and transfer $100 in USDC to my new non-custodial account. The process will work the same for any Ethereum-based ERC-20 token, but you cannot do this with a non-Ethereum token such as Bitcoin, which is a separate blockchain. After clicking Send, I'll paste in the destination address and select the amount to transfer. You'll notice that there's a network fee to make this transaction. After confirming, it'll take a few minutes for the transaction to process. If it doesn't pop up within a few minutes, you can click the Refresh button. Now you can see the $100 in USDC is in my non-custodial wallet. You should also have some ETH available in the account to cover the costs of any future transactions. These are also known as gas fees, and we'll cover this in more depth in future videos. Now that we've learned the difference between custodial and non-custodial wallets, 
reviewed the purpose of public addresses, and transferred funds to a non-custodial wallet, you're now ready to take advantage of DeFi and Web3 applications. In our next video, we'll show you how you can quickly and easily use funds in your wallet to trade on the DYDX platform, one of the biggest decentralized derivatives exchanges.